Hello everyone, welcome to Slip Joint Sawyer. Today we're we'll taking a look at another traditional British pattern knife and one that is still handmade here in the UK by a traditional sort of knife maker and that is Arthur Wright and Sons. Before we go any further I want to give a quick shout out to Randy's WSG. He actually did a review of this sort of same pattern very very recently and his review was so good of it that I pretty much bought the knife right after watching it so Randy this is your fault so thank you for that. But if you're not subbed to Randy, please go check out his videos and give him a sub. I'll also link the video he did of the Eat Trick uh, in the description of this video. So let's jump on with it. So as I mentioned, Arthur Wright & Sons Eat Trick or Etrick, whichever way you want to pronounce it. Very unusual looking knife, but one I've sort of put off for a while because of, you know, I didn't think I would use it or find it comfortable. But I will say it is a fantastic little pocket knife and one that has got a really interesting bit of history about it as well. But we'll start off with the close length and we're looking at one, two, three, about 3.8 inches, maybe 3.9 inches closed. You can see we have this absolutely beautiful olive wood covers on here. We do have brass pins holding those covers on and of course nickel silver pinched bolsters on here. Love the way the olive wood looks on this. Blade then, this one I got is absolutely fantastic. The blade is right down the middle and you can really see those brass liners in there making that wood pop. Do have a little bit of a, a wonk here on the termination of the backspacer, but it's a handmade knife, so nothing that's really going to bother me. And I got this for such a fair price from Moonraker Knives as well. This was around the £30 mark and I think they may have some of these left, so make sure you're checking them out for those as well. Reverse, again, very similarly matching wood as the front, which I really like to see when they match the handles at both sides. Again, got the brass pins holding this together, and it's wonderfully smooth. You can't feel the transition at all. All I can really feel is the difference in the texture going from the wood into the nickel silver bolster. You can see there's no gapping at all between the bolsters and the wood. Just real nice, smooth transitions. Back spring is nice and flush. Can't feel any stepping or anything like that all the way down, including right to the very end of the butt of the knife. We do have a little bit of a gapping, though, in the middle of the back spring here. I have shone a flashlight through it, and I can't really see any light through it. So I think it is just filled up with some oil or some dirt. But it does look a lot worse on the camera than it does in sort of real natural daylight. But would have liked to have seen that a little bit better, but it is very minor to pick this sort of thing up for a handmade knife. See the scales look nice and even on both sides. Can't really see any major differences. Maybe half it a little bit too much up here, but very, very minor. We have a nice little carbon steel blade on this. Before I open that, I'll just have a little go through about the general history of this knife before we go any further. So it started off as a small sort of gutting knife, the Etrick. Uh, reputedly, it was designed by the Earl of Warncliffe and his gamekeeper. And they used it to sort of, you know, clean out their game when they were hunting or when they were processing it when they were back back at the manor. General, it's a really comfortable general use knife. It's easy to carry. And as you can tell, it's a hell of a pull on here. We are about, because it's such a small blade, I'd say it's about an eight and a half pull. But it is manageable to open. It's not stupidly too hard to use. It's not really a pinch grip. It's definitely used the nail nick. You can see we have the Arthur Wright and Arthur Wright and Sons tang stamp down here. Got Sheffield, England, and then nice and plain on the back. And you can see on this Warncliffe blade, we do have a really nice grind on here. Maybe gone a touch heavy up in the choil, but again, nothing to really write home about. And this one came absolutely screaming sharp out of the packaging. And there's one thing I will say about the Arthur Wright and Son packaging. When they sell these knives in bulk, they do it to keep the cost sort of low. So the packaging was very simple. It came just sort of wrapped up in this little baggie here with the 106, the, the pattern number, and then obviously this handle material, which is olive wood. But it came wonderfully presented to me in this. It was wrapped up with bubble wrap all around it in the box, and it was very secure from Moonwrecker. So I do appreciate that, guys. Thank you very much for sending it in such, such a secure manner. Anyway, we have a nice little Warncliffe blade on here. Nice clean nail nick, no swedging. Nice snap on the open as well. Blade length then, we're looking at tip to tang of 1 to 2.4 inches. And then a cutting edge, we're looking at 
pretty much bang on the two inches mark for a cutting edge. So a very UK legal knife and definitely one that will be legal in most places around the world. So this knife, what would I use it for? I think this would be fantastic as a, as a whittler, as anyone, for anyone that does pocket carving, anything like that, be fantastic for you. The way this sort of sits in your hand, this recurve bit on the handle fits in the palm here and you can really do nice draw cuts or it's great for pull cuts towards you for the way that naturally fits your grip. And it's even really comfortable in the normal position as well. It does fit the palm really well. And because it's such a small blade with a nice big handle, you do have a lot of control over that blade, whether you're carving towards you, slicing cuts, prepping game, whatever it may be. This is a C70 carbon steel blade then, so it will need some care to look after it. I mean, I've only had this about a week and I've been using it on and off and you can see I've got a little bit of patina forming on the blade there as well. Perfect first knife for the younger generation then, as it is a nice small blade, one that's not going to be easy for them to flick out or get it loose in their pocket. As I mentioned, it has a nice strong pull on it and listen to the snap. Really nice firm snap and a really nice strong pull to open. And it locks up there wonderfully. There's no way you're going to push this thing really close at all. I'm struggling really to get it any further than that with full force on my finger. You can, of course, push it with the thumb, but very rare that's going to happen. Nice little kick there, which stops any sort of blade wrap on the back spring. On the back spring. And just a wonderfully designed knife, and one that you can see was definitely designed for a purpose. And with the addition of these olive wood scales, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Really glad to have picked this one up. I've got a nice little British or Sheffield knife collection on the way. So I may have to do a sub collection video very soon when I get a couple more of those. I'm sure you guys would like to see that. One I'm very, very happy to pick up. And Randy, I'm so glad you did the review of this. And it sort of pushed me over the edge I needed to go and pick this one up. But there we go, guys. That is my review of the Arthur Wright and Sons Etric or Etric. Pick this up from Moonraker Knives here in the UK. I will link that in the description. Very, very reasonably priced. We have the Olivewood Scales C70 Carbon Steel Warncliffe Blade. This is UK legal. I really hope you enjoyed this review. Please be sure to like, subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.